In today's video, we're gonna be working with the Sonoff SC by IT Studio. It's a great platform that's powered by an AT Mega 328, the chip inside an Arduino Uno, and the ESP8266. The Sonoff SC carries an array of sensors that allow us to measure environmental conditions, in particular, temperature, humidity, light and noise levels, and the amount of dust particles in the air. The default firmware isn't great, so we're gonna write our own and upload it onto the device. All right, let's do this. The first thing I'll do is open it up by unscrewing the bottom piece. Once we get it out, we can see the different sensors that are on it, a DHT11, a GP2Y10 dust sensor, a photoresistor, and on the other side, a micro LED microphone alongside the data processing chips, the AT Mega 328, as well as the ESP8266. In today's video, we're gonna worry about the firmware that runs on the AT Mega 328, which allows us to talk to the sensors that are on board. Before doing that, I'll go ahead and remove the DHT11 so that I can substitute it by the more capable DHT22. The DHT22 also reads temperature and humidity, but it has a finer resolution of the data. After replacing it, I can do a quick check by measuring the voltage across its power and ground terminals. I'll also install the pin headers that'll allow me to connect USB to serial adapters. For aesthetic purposes, I'll also be adding a little bit of light to the device. I'll do so by using a 24 pixel WS2812B ring that fits the device perfectly. I'll screw it back in and I'll be using the ISP terminal of the board. With those two modifications in place, I can go ahead and connect the USB to serial adapter to the pin header on the board as well as the USB in my computer. I'll also need to remove the two jumpers on the underside of the board. Now it's time for some tests. I'll open up the Arduino IDE, make sure the correct board and port are selected to program the 328 chip. I'll go ahead and select the Arduino Uno. Using the library manager, I'll install the fast LED library for controlling the WS2812B LED. I can quickly open up one of the examples, upload it to the board, and ensure that the LEDs are working properly. I can then create a new file that I'll call AI underscore son of SC onto my desktop. I'll install two additional libraries for the rest of the sensors. The simple DHT library and the SDFAT library for storing data in the micro SD card, which we'll do in a later video. I'll include the respective header files. Then I'll define the different constants that I'll need for working with the WS2812B LED. For controlling the LEDs, I'll create a function that I'll name setLED. In the function definition, I'll just iterate through all the LEDs and change their individual color. I'll call the addLEDs method in the setup function, and with that done, I can give it a quick test. The next thing I'll test is the DHT sensor. I'll initialize the pin that I can get from the schematic as well as the two measurements we're gonna be collecting. I'll instantiate an object that will allow me to talk to the sensor. In the loop function, I'll simply call a getDHT function that I'll define next. I'll use the object's read2 method to get the measurements of temperature and humidity. If something goes wrong, I'll just simply print out a message to the serial monitor 
Um, to do that, I'll need to initialize the serial communication. If everything goes according to plan, I'll also print out the measurements to the serial monitor. Given the data rate of the sensor, I'll need to add a delay of 2 seconds in between measurements. With that done, I can upload the code and give it a test. Now, we can add the rest of the parameters that we'll need to get measurements from the other sensor. For the dust sensor, I'll add a function to the loop function that I'll call getDust. For getting the dust measurement, I'll need to turn on an infrared LED within the sensor. So I'll need to initialize the pin to be an output. It'll need to be turned on for a specific amount of time that comes from the data sheet. Then I can get an analog measurement from its data pin. If everything goes well, I should be able to see the data printed out on the serial monitor. To test it out, I'm simply gonna use a little bit of smoke. If you're doing the same test, please be careful. For getting the noise levels, I'll use a function that I'll call get noise. For now, I'll simply get a single measurement from the data pin of the microphone. This is an extremely noisy measurement, no pun intended, so it'll be better to do an average over time. But for now, this is good enough. Similarly, for measuring light levels, I'll use a function that I'll call get light. This is also a noisy measurement, so it'll be better to take an average, but for now, I'll just take a single sample and print it out to the serial monitor. I'll remember to call the function from within the loop function, and as I'm ready to test things out, I'll simply do one at a time. We'll start with the noise levels that we can test by just simply tapping nearby. Then for the light levels, we can cover the photoresistor and see how the measurements increase as light levels go down. So with all the sensors working, we can do things like set the colors of the LEDs depending on the measurements. For demo purposes, I'll say that when the temperature goes above 25 degrees Celsius, I'll set them to red and set them to green if it's less than that number. I'll do a little bit of formatting of the data so that it's easier to read on the serial monitor and I'll need to modify the set LEDs function so that it can take a parameter. Now we can test the code and see that when the temperature crosses the 25 degree mark, the LED color will change. And there you have it. Today, we started tinkering with the Son of SC, which is a great platform for environmental monitoring. For now, I've just tested a quick firmware on the AT Mega side of things, which controls the measurements that are taken from all the different sensors on board. For the next video, we'll clean up the Arduino code and start tinkering with the ESP8266 firmware so that we can access the data wirelessly. If you like my videos, I invite you to go to my Patreon page and chip in a buck or two. It really helps me put in more time and make more videos, release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I'm also very active on social media, so I encourage you to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and you can ask me questions or suggest what should be the next topic I should do on a video. And a lot of people have been using the community tab of the channel, so you can jump on there as well. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.